so uh, in today's lecture we will move on to the different types of uh, drainage systems so we have already discussed what is uh, drainage drainage is the removal of excess water and uh, the constructions which are used to remove the drainage uh, i mean uh, excess water is known as drainage systems there are different types of drainage system we will move on to each of the different types before that we will see what is the principle behind drainage we can say that the principle is darcy's law darcy's law states that the velocity of flow through a saturated soil medium is directly proportional to hydraulic gradient hydraulic gradient is nothing but the slope of the land so it is represented by delta h by l delta h is the horizontal distance and l is the vertical uh, l is the vertical uh, horizontal distance and delta h is the change in height so uh, that is the slope so hydraulic gradient is the slope so and darcy scientist named darcy has uh, proposed that the velocity of flow through a saturated medium velocity of water flow through a saturated medium is directly proportional to the slope which is known as hydraulic gradient so v directly proportional to i is the equation for darcy's law where v is equal to ki where k is the hydraulic conductivity of the soil and uh, we can write it as q is equal to ki where q is the discharge k is the hydraulic conductivity i is the uh, hydraulic gradient and a is the area okay so this is the thing and uh, so this is the principle of uh, what is that uh, drainage and darcy's law is valid as long as the flow is laminar and it can be applied only for soils which is finer than that of gravels okay now we will move on to the classification of drains we can the, uh, classify the drains into two actually one is according to construction and the other one is according to function according to construction there are two types natural and artificial drains and according to function there are three types open closed or subsurface and vertical open drains are again classified into three surface drains seepage drains and surface cum seepage drains closed or subsurface drains are classified into two tiles and moles okay so this is the general classification of uh, drains we'll see each of them first one according to construction there are two types natural and artificial so here you can see the figure natural means this na uh, there is a natural system for drainage it is not man made it is naturally occurring and it is the lowest valley line between two ridges there are two two ridges here and there is a valley line along which the water can flow and it is naturally occurring its examples are drainage lines nalas etc and the second one is artificial drains which are man made in nature any structures which are used for drainage which is man made is known as artificial uh, trains so this is an example of artificial trains now the second classification is according to function there are three types open drains closed or subsurface drains and vertical drains we'll see what are open drains open drains are the drains which are open to atmosphere okay here you can see an example so this is a figure showing this this is the surface of the soil and this is a plant this is a plant root zone actually the water table was up to this okay so what we have to we have done is we have uh, constructed two channels here and here one channel is here and one channel is here and this channels will act as drainage channels open drains and the water will will be drained into these channels due to which the water table get decreased okay earlier the water table was up to this height and now the water table decreased to this height and the roots will get much aeration due to this drainage this type of drainage system is known as open drains because it is open to atmosphere it is not closed okay the open drains uh, will catch storm water storm means rain water and it lowers the water table it reduces the sloughing of the slides when there is much water in the soil the soil has a tendency to slough okay when the water is removed it will reduce sloughing of slides and it removes large quantities of surface as well as subsurface water it can remove and the open drains are of mainly three types surface seepage and surface cum seepage we will see each of them so here are the three classification of open drains surface drains 
which are above the surface which are used to remove the excess irrigation water and the uh, rainfall water and the second one is seepage drains seepage you all know what is seepage seepage is the horizontal movement of water below the surface of the soil so uh, from uh, reservoirs or dams there may be leakage from the surface so that uh, leakage or seepage water will reach the crop root zone which is nearby okay so uh, what will happen the uh, crops may have uh, some bad effects due to that water so we have to remove that seepage water so the drains which are used for removing the seepage water are known as seepage drains and there are surface come seepage drains the drains which are used to remove both surface as well as seepage water so all of these drains are open only they are open to atmosphere they are not closed so they are known as open drains okay so we have discussed open drains there are three types surface seepage and surface come seepage now we will move on to the second classification closed or subsurface drains so closed or subsurface drains are drains which are laid deep below the ground okay below the soil surface we are placing the drains and we are closing the drains that kind of drains are known as closed drains or subsurface drains here you can see a figure so this is the land surface which needs drainage we cannot see any drainage structure here we can just see the arrows these arrows represents the flow of flow direction of water there are actually drains below this surface there are pipe like structures pipe like drains below this surface so that kinds of drains are known as subsurface drains you can see here a pipe which is discharging its water to a common outlet this is an outlet and there are many such kind of pipes here and which discharges water to this common outlet so that kind of drains are known as subsurface drains they are of two types tile drains and mold drains tile drains are this uh, cylindrical pipe like structures okay they can be made of concrete burnt clay or pvc and mold drains are cylindrical channels okay they have uh, no lining uh, they are just channels made up of soil okay so we can uh, move on to this tile and mold so tile drains are permanent drains and efficient drains they are actually short length pipes called tiles are laid with a grade so we have we need a slope for slow, uh, the flowing of water okay so we will place short length pipes along the slope of uh, the channel or along the slope of the ground so the sh uh, short length pipes will not be connected to each other there are small short length pipes that pipes will not be connected to each other so what will happen is there is a gap between this pipe through which the water enters the pipe okay through this gap the water enters the pipe and it will flow along the slope and it will reach a common outlet so it acts as a drainage system so it can be placed 1 to 1.5 meter below the ground surface and can be made up of concrete or burnt clay or even pvc we can use and uh, the pipes are held end to end without joining each other if we are joining the pipes then there will not be any space for the water to enter the pipe okay now uh, the second type of subsurface drain are mold drains mold drains are just cylindrical channels without any lining okay they can be made in clay soils only because clay soils have only clay soils have the tendency to uh, stick together okay they can uh, they have the tendency to cohesive they have a cohesive nature so they will stick together and uh, if we are making something with clay they will be there will be a plastic nature it will not be uh, what deformated okay so clay soils can be used for the small drains it is laid at a depth of 45 to 120 cm below the ground and its diameter is it is cylindrical in, i mean cylindrical in structure so uh, the diameter will be 7.5 to 15 cm and you cannot imagine that it has a life span of 10 to 15 years so clay is that much stable so if you are making a channel in clay without any lining itself it will have a life span of 10 to 15 years so we can see the figure of mold drains here so this is an instrument which is used to make this mold drain so this instrument is known as mold plow which is attached to which can be attached to a tractor hitch and this uh, mold plow has a pointed end here so we will insert this pointed end so in this figure you can see this is the ground okay this is the ground surface we will insert this mold plow into this ground okay it will be inserted up to this depth 
and it will be dragged okay while dragging what will happen a cylindrical hole is formed here okay after making the hole up to the desired length we will remove this uh, mold blow we will uh, what is that we will uh, we will uh, raise this mold blow so what will happen the mold blow will uh, come through this and uh, it will come out okay so after removing this mold blow what will happen this there was a penetration uh, hole here this hole will be automatically closed because of the nature of clay soil because of the cohesive nature of clay soil okay the channel will remains okay the soil uh, the, uh, the soil there was some soil here the small plow will remove that soil in a cylindrical manner and after that the small plow is removed from this portion and this soil here will be automatically closed and the channel will remain the same okay so this is about mold channel we will discuss it uh, later in our chapters so this is about subsurface drains there are two types molds and trails now we will move on to vertical drains vertical drains are nothing but wells okay a number of wells are used to remove the subsurface water excess subsurface water so uh, you can see here there are three wells the cone of depression of each well will overlap with the other okay what do you mean by cone of depression here there is a well we are discharging water out of this well so what will happen the water table here there there was a water table this is the water this was what the water table when the pumping of water starts what will happen the water level uh, nearby the well will decrease and it will form the shape of a cone okay so this is known as the cone of depression so we will construct a number of wells in such a way that the cone of depression of the wells will over overlap each other okay uh, in such a manner we will construct many wells in the same area uh, within some distances so what will happen is this subsurface excess water in the subsurface will be removed by discharging from the wells and this discharged water is used for some irrigation or domestic purposes so uh, likewise we can remove the subsurface water so this is known as um, vertical drains so these were the general classification uh, elaborate classification of different drains now we will move on to the general classification so we can uh, choose some drains in specific okay so the general classification of drains are of four surface drain subsurface drain vertical drainage or tubal drainage and bio drainage there are four main drainage systems so we'll see each of them we have already seen them but still we will see in detail first one is surface drainage as you all know the st structures which are used to remove surface water are known as surface drainage an explanation for this surface drainage is given by asae american society of agricultural engineers in 1979 this is the definition removal of excess water from the soil surface in time to prevent damage to crops and to keep water from ponding on the soil surface or in surface drains that are closed by farm equipment without causing soil erosion so this is the explanation of surface drainage it removes rainfall as well as excess irrigation water and this kind of drainage uh, surface drainage problems uh, occurs in flat lands where there are depressions okay in flat lands if there are some depressions the water will be uh, ponded in that depressions so we can remove the uh, water in that depressions by means of this surface drainage so this is the figure this figure we have already discussed and the second one is subsurface drainage it is the removal of excess soil water water below the soil in time to prevent damage to crops because of a high water table it can be constructed within a depth of 1 to 3 meter and uh, the subsurface drainage problems occurs in area which have a, which have shallow water table okay so this is the figure this figure we have already discussed so this is a sectional view of a tile drainage system this is a tile drainage system because pipes are used here so this is a sectional view here this is a soil surface there is a plant here its roots are here initially the water table goes up to this depth we have inserted two pipes here these are two pipes sectional view of two pipes we have inserted the tile drainage here now what happened is uh, the water from this portion will enter into the pipes so the water table will 
decrease and the water which is entered into the pipe is discharged at some outlets some rivers or streams or like that so this is subsurface drainage now the third one is vertical drainage or tube well drainage so it is uh, defined as the control of an existing or potential high water table or artesian groundwater condition so we have to we can remove or decrease the groundwater uh, with the help of vertical drainage in this we will use wells for removing the water we will use either shallow or deep tube wells or open wells most tube well drainage systems consist of a group of wells spaced with a sufficient overlap of their cone of depressions as i have explained earlier there are a, there may be a number of wells which are placed at some distance in such a way that their cone of depressions will overlap each other so we'll discharge the water out of the well and that water is used for irrigation or domestic purposes so while discharging uh, the subsurface water level excess water from the subsurface will be drained so this is uh, the figure of water drainage system there are a number of wells here and all the wells are discharging so at the same time what will happen the water table will get decreased the discharged water can be used for some other purposes and another important uh, type of drainage system is bio drainage this is nothing but the drainage by means of some plants or trees okay you all know that plants have the capacity to transpire transpire or transpiration means the removal of water from the uh, leaves and other plant parts is known as transpiration so uh, when the plant a plant having higher capacity of transpiration will absorb more water from the root zone okay for example eucalyptus so such plants have the capacity to remove more water from the root zone because it has the it has higher capacity of transpiration okay so uh, that kinds of uh, plants can be used as bio drainage for removing subsurface water so rice plant or paddy plants also have the capacity of higher transpiration higher transpiration capacity is there but it cannot be used as a bio drainage because its roots are very small and its uh, roots length is very small it, uh, they are thin roots they don't have the capacity to absorb much water but they have the capacity to transpire because they need more water but they cannot absorb more water okay so that is the thing so bio drainage example of bio drainage is eucalyptus okay so this is about today's lecture so this is the uh, uh, figure of a bio drainage here um, this is the soil surface we are planting some plants assume this as eucalyptus so uh, they have higher transpiration capacity all the water will be transpired here when the transpiration capacity increases what will happen the roots plant roots will absorb more water from the ground and the water table at the ground surface will decrease so this is the thing happening in bio drainage system thank you